Okay, so today, uh, hopefully in this afternoon, I'm going to install my new clutch uh, into my 1992 Toyota Hilux. And the transmission I'm uh, taking out to put the clutch in is a G52. If you look on the engine firewall right here on this plate, you can see uh, engine drive line, or sorry, transmission drive line. It says G52 right there. And uh, the G52 looks like this. Let's give you a little look here. So that's the G52 transmission. With the tra this is the transfer case. I didn't take the transfer case off. Transfer case is still attached here, right at this seam here. This is actually the transmission here and here, and of course the bell housing. And this is the bell housing for the uh, 3L diesel. So what I did is I changed the seal, at the uh, transmission input shaft seal inside this housing. So you have to pull out these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bolts. And then the seal is located in there. Make sure you tip the transmission back the way I have it angled back here when you do it. Otherwise your tranny fluid will run out here and make a huge mess. And then when you reinstall these bolts, put bolt sealant on them according to the, uh, to the manual. So I put bolt sealant on these bolts. I'm not sure why they require that, but I put it on. And um, yeah, so I'm also putting in uh, the center force Uh, DF501110 clutch and the throw out bearing is B590. So it's this throw out bearing and it's this clutch. Here's the center force clutch. It's got these weights on it on this big ring and the idea is when you rev it up uh, because and the clutch is uh, engaged these weights want to fly out and they, they put more spring pressure on the uh, on the disc here's the disc it's a it's a special disc also it's got half of the number of pads on this side but um, I think the idea is the each pad the, half the surface area equals double the force on the remaining for each one of the remaining surface areas so you get more force on that side that's got the big springs and this is uh, I had to get this uh, flywheel this is now a solid mass flywheel from Toyota I don't know the part number unfortunately but I uh, uh, I ordered it through a JDM supplier its weight is 40 point I think it's 40.3 or 41 pounds so it closely matches the original and there's my uh, rear main seal bearing, uh, sorry, rear main seal engine oil seal. And I'm going to be replacing that as well. While you're in there, you might as well get these seals replaced. And my old one was leaking a tiny bit, just weeping basically. So this new seal I'll put in first thing here. Here's the old clutch, the old Toyota clutch. If I can separate it for you. It has these rubber, uh, rubber pucks. I don't know if they're better or worse than the springs. Uh, you can see that the reason I'm changing it is I don't know if you can see on here or not with the light reflection, but there's burn marks on here. It was slipping quite a bit and starting to actually burn. And uh, I could smell it and uh, it, it's just getting weak. If you look on here, you can see that the, the rivets head that comes up from this side is almost flush with the material now. And that's the sign that the clutch is, is finished. And the same on the other side. This is the rivet going the other way. So this head is recessed. But if you look at that same head on this side, You'll see it's almost flush with the material on this side. This one's fully recessed. Every second one is going the opposite way. So every second one is almost flush on this side and every second one on the other side is almost flush over here. So the clutch has uh, seen, its, it's seen its day anyways. It's time for replacement. I have 230,000 kilometers on the truck, which is not a lot. The clutch could probably go normal highway driving, city driving. It could go another maybe 100,000, less 50,000, somewhere in there. But uh, I do a lot of 4 by 4 and I need to uh, change it now before the burning gets any worse. And this was what they call a dual mass. Let me put this camera down. This is what it is. So if I uh, just quickly take it apart here.
Uh, just before I do that, I'll show you on the back here. You can see there's big springs back here. You can see my spring. This one is broken. This one is broken. That's the only good one, and this top one is broken. So, inside, so in here there's a little clutch also. This right here is actually clutch material. Goes in there, locks into this center piece if you can see it. You can see these fingers go back and forth between the springs. So this this out this uh, stationary mass, I guess we'd call it the one attached. This one's the one that bolts to the um, has the ringer on it and bolts to the uh, uh, crankshaft. Is separated from this mass, which I have upside down. So the two can move independent of each other up to a degree but once your springs are broke it allows way more movement than there should be for this one it's only supposed to have a so much like maybe eight or nine degrees of movement back and forth in relation to the stationary mass and this one has way way more because my springs are broke i'm just lucky the springs haven't fallen apart and damaged any of the parts inside her so i'm glad i changed this when i did this weighs 37.3 pounds uh with everything complete this fly, this solid single mass flywheel weighs 40. So it's, and it's, it's designed and engineered by Toyota as a replacement for this, which had all kinds of problems. So I, yeah, that's what I'm doing today. So when you, when you tap in the rear main seal, it's important not to hammer it in too far. The uh, outer lip of it here should just be flush with the, uh, with the engine. So get yourself a, a, a block of wood gently tap it in until this this is all flush all the way around here you can keep pushing the seal all the way in it'll eventually fall inside the engine uh, so just be aware of that there is no there is no ridge in the back of this 3l to stop that seal from going completely inside the engine and then you're really in trouble so don't do that just do it flush all the way this is the new pilot bearing I installed you can google there's lots of ways to get the old pilot bearing out fill that hole full of grease and put a bolt in it as one of them and then hammer on the bolt and it'll just pop out keep adding grease it'll move little by little or you can fill it full of bread I saw another way to do it fill that hole full of bread take a bolt that's just that size and hammer on it with a hammer until this bearing starts to pop out so there's a couple ways to do that new pilot bearing new rear main seal new transmission input seal I'll just install the uh, this plate goes back on first this uh, this little piece goes on here. I managed to save mine from it coming apart. So I'll put it back on. I think it was about like that. But uh, this is how this is how it came off. So when it was put on, it was uh, deformed like this. I'm just going to put it back on the way it came off. I'm not going to even try to find a new seal for that. I don't know if I could get one or not. Um, so that's just a uh, seal between this plate that goes on next on top of here with this bolt here and this little bolt here to keep water out I guess I'm not sure what it's there for but so I'll put this plate on and then I'll put my uh, my flywheel on my clutch and pressure plate and I'll catch up with you then so when you're installing this uh, new Toyota replacement solid mass flywheel the bolts it comes with or you have to make sure you buy is the silver one which you can see is much shorter than the original one with the dual mass flywheel because the dual mass flywheel is so much thicker a thicker at the mounting point anyways it's not any thicker here but just at the mounting flange so make sure you get the right side right uh, length of bolts when you get the new solid mass flywheel okay so I found an easy way to torque up the flywheel bolts Without the engine turning over, ouch. Ooh, that's hard in the head. Was to lock up the front uh, harmonic or balancer bolt. On the front of the engine here, 
with a 19 socket on a long handled ratchet and it's tie strap to the uh, whatever's close. I just use the steering uh, steering stabilizer steering uh, steering box arm. And then when you tighten up the night the rear uh, flywheel bolts to 90 foot pounds, all you're doing is applying more tightening force to the harmonic balancer bolt anyway like it's not going to loosen because it's they're both uh, normal thread and it works really well. Just before you install the uh, clutch assembly, it's a good idea to give this just a light spray with... Uh, this is just brake clean. And some clean steel wool. Clean paper towel. Mine has a little bit of surface discoloration from rust from sitting outside or something that'll just come off but the main thing is make sure there's no grease or oil on this surface there that should do it nice and clean ready for the uh, clutch pressure plate okay so I've got the uh, clutch pressure plate on and all the bolts in just finger loose and now you can see that the uh, the centering tool which by the way comes with center force doesn't list it when you buy the center force uh, clutch assembly they do include one of these tools, so don't order one separately. It comes in the box. But you can see that I can still have some movement. A little bit of movement. So what you want to do before you tighten anything right down is see how much up and up play and how much down play and kind of put it right in the middle. Same with side play and side play. And just put it somewhere in the middle there before you tighten your first bolt. So it's so the clutch uh, friction disc stays centered where it should be. Okay, you just pull out the centering tool and you can see it just, that's how your clutch should go in. No zero resistance, or sorry, your transmission input shaft. I tighten these all down evenly, so you don't over, don't do one and then all the, and then the next, do them each a little bit at a time. Even with the force and don't, if you have this center force style of clutch, don't worry if this ring is a little bit off center. Try to get it somewhat centered and then it'll, it's actually self-centering once it starts to spin. So I wouldn't worry about that.